Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, March 21st, 2024 Scarborough Board of Education workshop. Can we call the attendance, please? Sure. Mrs. Gammon? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Oh, she's been excused. Mr. Kelleher? Here. Ms. Leong? Here. Mrs. Lindstrom? Here. Ms. Tarpinian? Here. Ms. Trapini Huff? Here. Ms. Leisure? Here. And Mr. Shumway? Here. Wonderful. Would everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, agenda item 4.0 is a workshop, and 4.1 is um, defining the student representative position on the school board. So to give a little background, um, when the board met to review goals and, um, or no, I'm sorry, not goals, to review our self-evaluation and to really take a look forward for the next six months, hey Mike, um, we were really looking at um, where we can be a little bit more strategic. And so that led into a conversation about the student representative roles and how we could make it a little bit more uh, meaningful for the students, right, and, and so that they get a little bit more out of it and that um, it the, the experience is just a little bit deeper for them. And so um, we thought this would be a good time for us all to talk about that and kind of look at where we can make some changes. Um, I do know, um, I, Nate, I know you have some ideas not to put you on the spot, but um, I thought maybe we could start there. Sure. With some of the things you had been mentioning. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think one of the one of the things that struck me about the conversation um, getting underway was how that might fit into our extended learning opportunity um, program or our career pathways program as an extended learning opportunity. Um, if you're not familiar with that program um, or what an ELO is, generally an extended learning opportunity is sort of this experiential field work driven learning opportunity um, that has a lot of different shapes and forms. Um, typically it comes together because we've got a collection of experiences that are going to jive well um, in terms of what a student might be interested in. So the student has a hand in shaping it and then we kind of pull together some of these things that we might have. Um, in this particular case, I think the board, um, the school board rep could be a really good kind of core experience. Um, and then we could kind of wrap things around that based upon what the student goal might be. Um, if it's an interest in, you know, serving, you know, what does a representative do? That might look a little different than, I think it's gonna be something probably civics or social studies oriented, um, but it might be, it might look different if like, I wanna understand how local government works versus state or federal or whatever. Um, so I think the student would have a hand in shaping it, but it would be, um, kind of this core experience um, that we would we would have to figure out how to assign credit and all of that. The nice thing about that is it also comes with some built-in accountability measures, um, and it's also credit bearing, um, which I think could entice more students to do it. Um, and so there's a couple in terms of accountability, like we have a staff person at the high school who checks in on that. Um, that's developed as part of the plan. What are the checkpoints? What are the benchmarks? What are the deadlines? That kind of stuff. Um, and there's usually kind of big celebrations built into that at some point along the way. Um, so it just offers um, an interesting way to kind of combine some things that, you know, that we've got in terms of programming that might meet the board's needs in terms of trying to really think about this position and get, help people get more out of it. Because I'll ask 185 questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I guess my question is more for Colby. Yes. Okay. But so you can address. Okay. Does anybody have <laughs> questions about this for right now? Right. Not just one. I think it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Like on the surface, it sounds really. Yeah. Uh, do you, yeah. Yeah. Please. I have a question. I was wondering if it would just, if it were to be an ELO, if students who weren't interested in that program could also still do it, or if it would just strictly be an ELO opportunity. Um, I think it's something that this team, I mean, I'm, I think it'd be something this team would want to talk about here and now um, in terms of what the board's goals are for that position. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, that was just an initial thought I had. It doesn't have to be the direction we go. Um, 
but it, again, it builds in some of that accountability. It lets us wrap around additional learning, um, supplementary, complementary type stuff. Um, but if that's not a direction the board wants to go, I think we could probably have another conversation about how to how to enhance that experience too. Those Is there something you're thinking yeah. that no. like that would be a concern with it being an EL? No, not at all. I was just strictly. I was just curious. Yeah. Because if um, I'm not, I'm not as familiar, and I've, I, I don't know. I shouldn't speak for everybody, but with the EL, with any, with right, it's 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 just only a few years since I was in high school. All <laughs> um, right, right, just right, right around the corner. Um, but is if someone or is there, it, would there be a concern? Do you think if someone participated in the ELO, ELO program that it would take away from other credits that they might want to take? Like, is there anything you're thinking of that way? Like, what would make someone not want to take the ELL path and still be a school board member? Oh, I'm not sure. Like, well. I mean, I didn't, well, I'm just thinking about, like, me personally. I didn't yeah, do this because I was interested in, like, civics or government. Mm -hmm. I did it more because I wanted to be, like, more involved with, like, stuff that happens at the school, like, as a student, you know, rather than, like, I'm interested in, like, pursuing civics or government in the future. So I was just thinking, like, there, there I think there's some students that would, I don't know how to phrase it, but, like, there's some students that are more interested in that aspect rather than, like, a government or civics, like. So maybe they're not interested in public service, but. Per more, se, like a yeah. politician, but like being more involved in with the schools and yeah. stuff, and like but policy, yeah. and maybe if it's not like framed in a particular way, you know, yeah. you know like you, you're getting credit, that's great. Yeah, that's true. And you're getting the experience no matter what. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I, but I wouldn't, you know, you know, maybe that is a concern. Maybe kids that don't understand all the, I, I you know, maybe who have a different motivation. They still could easily get civics credits, right? And that's it would be an ELO credit. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, it would just be it would be more of an elective credit. Really, the the way I kind of think of it, our ELO stuff, for lack of a better term, um, is it really kind of lives. It just sort of lives in a, a you know in like a like a catalog almost. And as a student maybe comes forward and thinks. Um, you know, hey, this, you know, it could be a leadership thing, right? It would just be this core experience and then how the rest, the shape of the rest of it would really sort of be something that you and the Career Pathways Coordinator shape. Okay. Um, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, I think it lends itself naturally to civics and, and government and that kind of stuff. But if we wanted to take a leadership studies angle on it or something of that sort, it could go in a lot of different directions. Um, this would just sort of bring it into the career pathways, ELO world, um, and when it would come up, right, there would be, we'd, we'd have to talk about how the board's process intersects with that. Um, but I think this would kind of, you know, we would have these reps every year, there'd be a rep that would be picked for the, for the position and the, the, the conversation at the building level with that rep would be, well, what do you want out of this? You're doing this, you signed up for it, but what do you want out of it? And it might look different kid to kid, right? right. The senior rep might want this angle. The junior rep might want this angle. Mm -hmm. They both have this shared experience, but the, the, the complementary experiences and field work that we wrap around that um, would kind of define what it would be. So it, it, it would just sort of give us a tool to play with in our catalog of, of, um, of career pathways and ELOs. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I wasn't too familiar with how the ELO program worked. It's really student-driven. Yeah, um, typically, there's a student that expresses an interest in something. We kind of talk, look at what we've got, um, and then there's a conversation around the student goals, um, what experiences we have that make the most sense in support of that goal, um, and then we kind of build it from there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, an example is um, each year at the middle school, we have an ELO student who comes down and um, works with a teacher in okay. the classroom. So I could even see this role as maybe part of um, that they spend a little time, the student rep spends a little time at the middle school and has a chance to talk with middle school students. Yeah. I love that too. I think that would be real, like a really great like thing to start. Mm -hmm. And it kind of formalizes your commitment, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Because if you're going, you know, to put a lot of time and effort into this work, it would be great to be able to acknowledge that yeah. in a way that you earn credits. And, um, you know, and again, I think that's a great idea yeah, in terms yeah. of, right, how do you go and 
visit the schools and get that information that you provide in the report, right? Yeah, because because in a, in a way that you're like living the experience, yeah, versus yeah. just getting it. That's from what I, that's else. what I was gonna say. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of hard to like, I don't know, like connect with yeah, the yeah. information, I guess. Yeah. Yep. No, that's a really, I, I think what we were talking about is that since COVID, um, I think that the position has moved to more like an email relationship between mm -hmm. you and the principals and Colby and the principals. Yeah, and yeah. not that that's a bad thing, but there's this opportunity. I think we could, we could give you more, right? Mm -hmm. And there's this real opportunity. Um, in my mind, I was wondering if maybe even during advisory or study hall, they could go over to the school and spend time. Like maybe that's a piece of it, right? And um, they go over and sit with the middle school principal and you could experience whatever's happening at the middle school that you are allowed to, that you then come back and report back to the whole board, right? Versus yeah. just this like email exchange that's currently happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a really great idea. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, the only thing is it's hard for us to prescribe. Like we don't really have a prescriptive, we might have a couple of ones that are, seems to have some interest. It's hard for us to prescribe it in the abstract without a student, a specific student with a specific goal right. sitting in front of us. Um, so again, I mean, that doesn't have to be a path that we take. Um, I think it would be a really interesting ELO. Um, and again, I think it might attract some kids um, since it would be credit bearing, um, but it doesn't have to be. I think if we're gonna go, if we're gonna go in a direction of more prescribing this and really fleshing it out, maybe the ELO won't go, um, it won't exist there, just because that's probably our most flexible form of credit. It's certainly one of our most flexible forms of credit. Um, but the student rep, the student is really like an a important stakeholder at the table, kind of, right. and it's really the, the career pathways person kind of thinking about these are all the partnerships, these are all the experiences I know we've got that I can, I can deliver on. And then the student is, you know, this, this is my goal, this is what I want to get out of it, and those two things kind of meet, and that's how the credit comes to be. Um, in addition to sort of these are the checks, and this is the work, and these are the standards, and all that kind of stuff. So it's hard to prescribe exactly the shape it would take, other than outside of this core experience. Yeah. So if the board is if the board is looking to get more specific, it may be a matter of you know may, we may want to go a different route than calling it an yellow. I mean, I could I, I didn't bring anything to sort of show you in terms of paperwork, but it really is you know to develop an ELO, it's pretty flexible, um, you know, outside of a core, outside of a goal and a couple of experiences. So what would that look like from our end? You get a student who's you know, Grace is interested. Uh, do you, does the um, uh, who's the what did you call the person that they career know? pathways coordinator? Yeah. Okay, the career pathways coordinator. Do they work with um, the chair to express what their interests are and then we kind of... I think the board, if we were to go that route, I think the board would drive what this experience, this part of the experience is. This is what we want for us. This is what we want a student rep to be doing. What we would provide at the high school would be the, the other experiences around that that would enhance the student's goal. I think that's the way I kind of view it because at the end of the day, the student rep position is really in the hands of the board in terms of what those responsibilities are um, and what the hourly commitment is and all that kind of stuff. Um, what we could provide is, you know, complementing that with a, with a set of experiences that allow, the, that are consistent with what the student might want out of it. Yes, I have this job description essentially. This is what the board tells me I need to do. These are some other things I want to get out of it. You know, maybe that's maybe that's going to the state house, right, and following a state or whatever the case may be, depending on the student's goals. But we would look to build a, a complete a complete experience around the student's goals and around what the board wants for the position. And they can do two, because we have two year seats. That would be, would they get credit for two years? We would just have to figure that out. I mean, I haven't had any in-depth conversation about it. I think it's, I'm not aware of any other board or school that's, that's doing it like this. 
Um, but I do think it fits really well in with the philosophy of that program. Um, and so I don't, you know, I'm not a, that doesn't scare me that other places aren't doing it. Um, I think we would just have to sit down and really look at the details. Um, what I'm kind of talking about here, I know, is broad strokes. Um, that's probably the best I can give you um, at the time, you know, at least right here and now. We would just need to flesh it out. I think what we would need from the board is what is a really clear description of what the student rep is doing? What's the time commitment? What are the responsibilities? Like, what are you going to embed in this position? Um, and from there, so that at least the student knows this is what I'm signing up for in terms of my responsibilities to the board. I think from there, we would meet with the student and say, what else, what are your goals? These are the board's goals for you. What are your goals? What do you want to get out of this position? And then again, we would, we would augment that with other experiences that we would provide um, you know, through our connections and our partnerships and our relationships. How is it pitched currently to entice students to become student reps? I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a huge sales pitch. It goes out in terms of like, you know, where there might be interest. Um, there's not a big, this is not a big pitch. We're, we draw from a fairly, a fairly narrow pool, I would say. I think if it becomes credit bearing, I mean, I would say the ELO, the interest in the ELO program and the Career Pathways growing, a program is growing in general. Um, and I think this would be something, you know, and I think it's a great way for kids to, kids are doing things, you know, that's, that's the cool part about that program is, not just learning about something, they go out and they do something, whether that's a you know field work or some you know some part of some profession. Um, so it would it would instantly I think add more of a draw, um, just because we have more kids signing up for that program these days. Yeah. When are the elections currently for the? Uh, like in I, April. Yeah. I was going to say we're trying to advertise for a school board position too. I mean maybe we could replicate some of the some of the material for, I mean if we're do, going out and doing an effort to get yeah because so what happens what we typically do is we we this is the responsibility or the job of the senior rep yeah. so in this in our case right now Colby so Colby would be able to um it with the help of Nate yeah. and this will be your first year right yeah yeah so in the past Sue right um they, it's the senior rep's responsibility to meet with the principal to kind of establish how this process is going to go and how they want to um, run the run the advertisement for it. So what I remember, Gabby Gifters, for example, asked for videos. Like she wanted people to make short little clips and explain why they wanted the role. Um, Yulia did too. Yulia did that as well, yeah. right? So I, I think, um, and maybe I'm thinking of Yulia, not Gabby. But do you, everybody has kind of made it their own. Oh, and, okay. and and advertised it and announced it on their own. So um, Colby knows that of his the expectations there. And so when you talk about laying out the expectations, that I think if we kept that, that would be one right where it's the senior reps mm -hmm. responsibility to do that. Um, and maybe it, maybe he um, partners with comms and figures out, you know, where is their overlap for this year for sure. Just be good, you know. Yeah. And you very well, like um, in my mind, first off, I think this is phenomenally innovative. And yeah. so the fact that you have thought about this and brought this forward, I think is absolutely amazing. This is a huge time commitment. And we're asking kids to come twice a month, every month for two years. And then one of those times, it's a um, workshop before that. And then we ask them to serve on a committee. And so it's that's an addition to the two right. meetings. So there's a lot that they're giving of their time. And sometimes that means that, you know, there's other things happening that might interfere, that they might miss something to be here. Or this, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot. It's it's a big responsibility. And so I think giving them credit is really, really huge. I, I am 100% on board with yeah, it. And I think the, those are the things we would want to know. Like in terms, those are, right, those are the details we would definitely want to be aware of yeah. in terms of determining how much credit when exactly to award, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, those are the things we would need to know in order to flesh this out some more. Yeah, God, it's like 10 hours a month anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, a it's a commitment. Does the student have a choice on the committee that they choose? So that could be, that could be part of the experience mm -hmm. too. You'd mm -hmm. pick yeah. the committee yeah. that fit with the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you very well might have someone that comes in. I'm coming, Colby, in just one second. 
you very well might have a student that comes in and says, I'm really, I really want to do this, but my interest is in communications. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the case, that they come in and their pathway with the high school looks like mm -hmm. reporting and looks like media work and looks like film work right and then here they work on the communications committee and they're writing newsletter articles you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like i think and you might have someone who wants to do leadership and you might have someone that wants to do public service mm -hmm. so it's if it's totally student driven it's going to look different and so to your point when they pick their committee right it's pro it's hopefully aligns with what their interest is yeah colby uh are you able to let him yeah you oh. can do it oh colby ready for you we're ready yeah I was going to perhaps bring up the idea of the student rep uh, maybe being paid in the future too, just because of like all the time commitment and that like it's basically like a board member still. And I, I mean, it's not, it shouldn't be like too much, but I mean, the board gets paid too. So I don't see why a student rep shouldn't be paid uh, at, uh, also. Having the ELO, if it's an ELO, it's like right. getting the, attaining the credits for it yeah, is kind of the equivalent right. of right. Right. Mm -hmm. that's okay. getting it. Yeah. Right. No. It wouldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't have both. So, Colby, we uh, we did look into that on the finance committee at at because you had mentioned that a while back. So we we uh, Kate and Diane looked into it, and I can't remember all the specifics. Um, behind it, I have to go back. Oh, you remember? Yeah. Free, so take it away. The payment and remuneration for board members is actually part of the town charter. Mm -hmm. And That's so we, if we were interested um, in doing that, it would really be part of that charter process, which unfortunately doesn't happen that often. It just happened last year. But it's certainly something that um, if people are aware, remember at the next town charter process, that would be the place to do that. Because the board has no, has no budget or ability to appropriate funding for payment. So like when you're talking about funding government, anything having to do with the government or, or town, local, municipal agency, you have to have a line item in your budget that's dedicated for that payment, which is tied to a funding source. And so for remuneration for board activities, that comes through the town. And the town charter is the mechanism in order to get the funding to do that. So it would have to go through that process for you as well, which is not a board process. It's actually a town council process. Right. I mean, it's actually bigger than that. The town puts together a committee, they study the charter, they make recommendations, and then the voters vote on those recommendations. And it certainly could fit in there, um, but that, that is, would be the mechanism to do it legally. And is there a question for Nate on that? Is there any conflict with receiving pay for credits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, if we, t uh, if we issue credit, I think for the ex as part of the experience, we would essentially be paying a student to go to school, which is not something uh, we, we do. Yeah. 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 And I'm actually thinking that's very comparable to, like, so I run an internship program at my current employment. I did my last employment. We offer paid internships in the summertime or unpaid externships during the school year for school credit. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's, very, that's a fairly normal process for people to get credit instead of payment and those mm -hmm. things to look equivalent for people in positions like this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the credit opportunity is honestly better because honestly, by the time you divide out all the hours, it would be not all that. <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I think there, yeah, you're, you're definitely, um, you know, if you think about the hours that we're working a week and the stipend we're getting, it, it's definitely pennies. Uh, if, right. if there's a negative, if we can assign a negative salary, we're probably there, right? Like, we're not talking about huge amounts of money here. But what I'm, I'm always interested in is how we create these opportunities for students to really develop and grow in a path that's unique and, and good for them. And yeah. that's what this is. That's what we're saying here is this Absolutely. is this really unique opportunity to create an experience that's meaningful per child, per, you know, yeah. per their per their goals and their hopes and their dreams. That serves the public interest. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, still at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it allows them to like, personalize their experience. Yes to get that. Yeah. Well, and you can develop a lot of skills. There's a lot yeah. of opportunity mm -hmm. for skill building when you think about like bringing young people into a professional setting 
like the idea of running the meeting, Robert's rules of order, yeah. as much as even the board, he has education on that, but learning that process, being familiar with the terms, yeah. being familiar with the process, um, being responsible for public speaking, um, creating records, understanding that, like there's actually a lot of soft skills that mm -hmm. are very helpful, that oh, yeah. will serve you well, because when you're asked to be on a board and you don't know anything about that, um, for your first opportunity, that can be a very challenging position. And yeah. I think there's value when you've done, when you've practiced it. And yeah. starting earlier, you know, is always better. The more, the more you learn, the better you are, the more able you are to accomplish whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Yes, I would support an ELO. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to figure out the specifics on what we want them to do. Yeah. Definitely be a balance between tight and loose in terms of what your job description is for for the school board reps the more you put in like the more hours right and the, the less flexibility the student has to maybe personalize around it so that would be a balance i think you might want to you might want to really consider as you as you visit any you know revisit any existing documentation or drop any new ones you know how much like you know i'm thinking about what kathy suggested is that something we write in or is that something we leave out and you know say this could be this right if it fits the student's goal? So you're going to want to think about that. I think as you as you draw that up. Yeah, because it's been pretty it's pretty loose right now. Pretty. Yeah, can we have a, a an example like a like a you know like a program that's written out that we could look at to kind of. For a, you mean for like a board? You mean for the ELO side or yeah, for a board for rep the, position? For, yeah, I could I could pull some stuff and, and send it to you. I, this would be a big one. I, just to be honest with you, we don't have a we don't have like a two year ELO yeah. like this one would essentially be. Yeah. Um, typically, they're offered in semesters, um, and we offer semester credit for it. Um, but based on the amount of hours, you know, the time commitment, we're talking about things beyond that as well in this two year experience. Um, yeah, I mean, I could give you something, but I don't think it would. I don't think it would exactly approach what we're talking about here. This would be a little. Yeah. Would it, I think yeah. I have a, a. Would it make sense if we came up with a list of things that we have that would have to happen? Yes. So you would need to attend this on these dates. We would want you to do this policy. That would be a great. And then sort of point. a menu of options of ideas we have mm -hmm. that are not you have to, but things that we are thinking might be valuable for students, would be valuable for the board, and then that could be kind of a guide. I'm thinking almost like a menu of options so the student could have an idea because I can't imagine that most softwares are coming to you with fully formed ideas about how they're going to function yep. on a school board. Yep. Um, <laughs> make a lot of I sense. And, um, and so that would be sort of a starting place. So would that be helpful for us to draft up sort of like what we would have to see yeah. and what we would like to see and sort of go for it. But I think that would be better than you trying to figure out what we're thinking. Yeah. As much as I know you probably could do that, you may have other things you need to work on. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I thought this discussion was important yeah. first uh, because in my time here in Scarborough we haven't had a discussion like this it's just been who might work best yeah. you know mm -hmm. and so I think it's really important that you get down what your expectations are so that those are really clear and then I think we can work around those other things to, to make it work but I think this is a good way to do it because mm -hmm. the students will get some return on their investment, so to speak, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 It could, it could present interesting challenges too. And I don't think I, I wouldn't, I don't want to be blind to that. Like sometimes yellows don't work, right? Like sometimes, so there's, and it, it, it is sort of entangling two different worlds to some degree, but th those would just be things I think we would have to work through. Um, I don't, I'm not aware of like it not like a not it not working out for a student rep. Like you haven't had one who's done a year and not come back, right? Uh, no. So that like that those are the kinds of things that we sometimes deal with in like a credit world. Like, yeah. hey, the course isn't working, or the course is too much. I want to drop this. I want to drop yeah. that. So those are things we might have to work through um, on the fly a bit. But it's it's good that that's the case, right? That there's pretty good continuity of students starting and finishing this gig. I think um, the nice thing about this, though, is the opportunity. There's so many opportunities for leadership. But like you said, if they want to do communications mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, policy, there's just finance, policy yeah. stuff. Finance, yeah. There's just so many avenues, finance types things. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what makes it 
makes it perfect for this um, situation because you could really mold it. I think that's where the wraparound is. Yeah. Right. You know, I think the wraparound is, you know, you know, you're going to be in this group, you're going to be on this board. What, what are some of your interests too? Is it finance? Is it yeah. policy? Public policy? Mm -hmm. Is it? communications and then I think that's what we wrap mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. what some of the framework goals that you have are like yeah. you've got to uh, be at the meetings you've got to you know be on a committee you've got to you know give reports you, you know some of those framework things you'll have to come up with and then I think the wraparounds are those other things Do you, are you interested in finance communications policy public policy you know yeah, because that's really, I mean, quite frankly, up until this point, that really describes their responsibilities. They attend two meetings a month. They pick a committee. Mm -hmm. They give a report once a month. Yep. The junior rep does the K-2 and the Wentworth school. The senior rep does the middle school and the high school. Are the so reports they, wide open, or are they only on after-school activities, or could it be anything? It can be anything, okay. yeah. But right now, so they, they do, do you want to talk about how the experience you've had so far? Sure. Um, I, well, I've just emailed the, all the primary school teachers, and then um, I look on the Wentworth newsletter and get my information about Wentworth from there. So there's a variety of stuff. Like, there's some after-school activities, but I'd say for, like, K through 2, most of it is, like, in school. And, like, you know, they've had, like, spirit weeks and, like, special visitors. Like, I think the fire department came in a couple weeks ago. Um, so I'd say at least for K2 and Wentworth, it's mostly like in-school stuff. So it's basically like a phase level report. So what yeah. yeah, but I think for middle school and high school, it's more after school, like sports and clubs, yeah. at least from Colby's reports this year. Yeah. Yeah. For me personally, ideally, I would like to see you guys in the schools and showing your face there. I would too, yeah. So mm -hmm. that way you can actually get that report firsthand mm -hmm. yeah. versus mm -hmm. getting it from the, the faculty. And then this also will let the younger kids see what you're mm -hmm. doing and then kind of encourage mm -hmm. them or motivate them as they get yeah. older. And maybe this is something that they might want to do when they're older too. Yeah, yeah that's a really good idea. Yeah, I would, I would love to, because to, I, I see the students' reps also as the voice of the students. Yes. And so to even be able to have some conversations about things with like a focus group of middle school students, yeah. which yeah. could happen, you know, maybe even during like a student council meeting after school or a lunchtime during school, just depending on, you know, their schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we've had like, I'm just calling to mind, well, one today, but then there was another opportunity where the middle schoolers, we had a group of middle school, you might remember kids that wanted to talk to the policy committee about the dress code, right? Exactly. And wearing shorts and the, the requirement we had for girls' shorts. And they came in. <coughs> it was absolutely wonderful. It was awesome. It was they, like, they were well prepared. They knew what they needed to talk about. They yeah. gave their pitch. And it was, I mean, I was in there like, well, yeah, I don't know why we've got this. Like, you totally make sense <laughs> right, what you're right, saying. Right, right, we'll right. throw the whole thing out and we'll start over, yeah. right? Because they were really good. That yeah, like the, so, the the, you know, they, they had been coming to me, so I met with them and said, hey, the school board, you know, policy oh. committee is looking at it, so, you know, let's yes. let's all go and I'll help support you. Yeah. But so, those are the kind of things, yes. especially when, yeah, really when policies are being looked at that really connect with students mm -hmm. yes. to come and student find out. Right. Exactly. Maybe it would be a good two-way, like, they could, our reps could backbeat what the board is what's coming from the mm -hmm. board to the students. Board yeah, I kind of like give the perspective, right? So yeah. hear theirs and, and take. Yeah. And that's happening at Wentworth. They have, um, I'll forward it to you, it, it just came through. They do, I guess the fifth grade class, we said, mm -hmm. they have a project every year and they have to advocate for something. And so one of the kids yeah. wrote town council and advocated to mm -hmm. replace the track. Park. Wow. So yeah, and it's he's has this whole letter written up. Yeah. He has photos in it. Yeah. I mean, the whole, it's like a two-page beautiful thing, right? Yeah. And so awesome. those are the things I think are really cool because if you can feed on that interest with a role model, right, you're a role model to them. And now they're like, oh, now look at this is something I can do Yeah. when I get to high school. Yeah, we didn't do that when I was in fifth grade, but that's that's really cool. Yeah. Too, especially considering it's so, so, like, central to, you know, like the schools and. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kathy, does the school have a, a student government? 
If the student council, yes, it's an after school club. It might be a neat tie in where the student rep can work with student council and say, hey, we've got, you know, there's these policies or mm -hmm. this budget mm -hmm. coming up and we mm -hmm. can just seek their feedback. Yeah, and I know the advisor too. I was in the student council oh, in middle school. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was great. Yeah. yeah, I could even see. So our student council at the middle school, they've been advocates for what, new chairs for the seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. that came last year. They got, instead of the flimsy shower curtains that had gaps and maybe fall off, they advocated and we have full doors on all of those. I'm trying to think of some other things. So I advocated for those water fountains with the water fillers oh, when yeah. I was there. The yeah. Fillers. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So oh, they they definitely. They, they do quite right. a bit. There's something with silverware one year. I think. Yeah. 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 Club. The Eco's right. Club. Eco's so club there have silverware. been a lot of things, and you know, right now we're getting student voice on recess and mm -hmm. the things that they would like for equipment and writing a grant, one of the SEL grants or. No, SEF. SEL's yeah, SEL 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 on my mind. SE <laughs> <laughs> something. Yeah, we're working yes. on that for the equipment. So. so that might be great to even report back to yeah. us what they're yeah. working on. As of, Is it like what Wentworth? Wentworth in the elementary schools? No, nope, middle school of, oh. of yep, implementing um, a recess next year. And there's nothing that says that you and Colby, like if you are interested in doing that and maybe you want to ask Colby if you two could switch. Yeah. Like there's nothing that says you have to do K2 and he has to or do Or maybe you school. trade off every other yeah. month so you're both, you're both getting you know, the both representatives oh, yeah. for next year are like fully yeah. invested in all idea. of the schools versus yeah. like I only know thing. about these yeah. and they know about yeah. those. Yes, yeah, exactly. that's a really good idea. Yeah. Because that's a really cool opportunity, right? Like to get to go and, and sit with them and have yeah. them yeah. learn about the school more. more. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. might be different than when you were there, right? Yeah, and that to me, like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that sounds more exciting than just like, you know, getting the newsletter, which is yeah, cool too. Does. But, you know, like, this sounds like a real hands on. Yeah, like, I'd like to do more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, all my communication has just been through email, which is great. And, like, email's great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, I would still like to do more. Yeah, I think you'll be able to say more too yeah. when you're actually in it. Yeah. yeah. So it makes your work even more valuable. Yeah, and I could put stuff in my report that's coming from students too, rather than just like the principals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Gray looks capturing all this. I said you all document the notes for today. Oh, good. Then I don't have to take the notes. <laughs> so. Um, that I think we can implement now. Like that, I don't think we have to wait yeah, to yeah. do. But what do you think about, like, what are we thinking timeline to implement something like this? Like, could it be next year? Is that because it's, we've already done the program of studies? Is that too soon? Like, ELOs are a little bit more flexible. Uh -huh. um, we kind of just keep them on the shelf. Um, and as a student <laughs> might come, or maybe if you just, you know, the student's got an interest, an academic interest that we can't meet in the form of a course. Um, so I don't think we're bound so much by the program of studies. Um, the worry I have would be timing up. Can we develop it fast enough with an election? Like, a, you know, you guys need a, you need a wrap mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that would be, that would be tight. Like if we have we could probably come pretty close to something and maybe get something we feel good enough about that we could say this, we could build the rest of it, you know, in September. But I think that the catch is how much do we need to do before we have, you know, before we nominate a student. Because I think the interesting thing, and I'm thinking about it in my head, is how do we market this to students? Because I think we would want to make sure that a student, you know, does a student have a choice to do the rep spot and not get the ELO credit? That's, like, that That's what I was asking, Grace, because yeah. I'm trying to understand a time that someone wouldn't want to get the credit for it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I mean. It's, it's extra work. I mean, that's what we're that's what we're talking about. It's more it would be more work. Yeah. Um, because they have to report back to it. The yeah, wraparound. Position. It's more accountability that we'd be adding experiences to. It'd be more hours. So that's one of the things that's playing out in my head. Might we have a student? Do we market this in a way that says? If you sign up to be a, you know, or if, if you win this spot, you're in an ELO. 
or do we say, you can do this, and oh, by the way, if you want to do it for credit, here's the option for you, here's, or here's some options for you. So those are some of the decisions um, that I think we, we would need to make, and we probably need to make them fast if we're talking about next year. Um, what if you were to, what if you were to kind of model it off of like a, like an internship where, where like the ELO or the credit part of it is they're keeping a binder, the log and some hours and reflection parts of it. And you know what I mean? Like, so you've got at the end of your experience as the, the rep, there's, um, a work product essentially that you're keeping and producing or handing in. Almost like you know, like a like a role internship. A portfolio. I was just thinking, yeah, you, like you'd very easy. It would be very easy in this job to create a portfolio. I mean, you could have right. a letter to the editor, whether you sent it or be not. Yeah, digital you one. Could have, could have. Yeah, you could do an article mm -hmm. for a newsletter. You could, like there are things oh, that you yeah, could yeah. produce for work. Your presentations would, for the presentations board. Presentations for the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could put together like mm -hmm. like concrete work that could be evaluated. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't have to go anywhere. It could just be. It, like, I could. I could and that yeah, would I be the extra. That would be kind of at least from the student's perspective, yeah. if you were if you were saying like, okay, well the the two aren't it's not like a zero sum game, right? It's not like you're the board rep, therefore it has to be credit bearing ELO. Right? The yes. the extra work would be, you know, that digital portfolio that you're generating. Yeah. Essentially, as as the board rep. It would have to be in some of the wraparound. That have to be they're going to get a credit, so there'd have to be some benchmarks along right. the way, which that could be yeah. a benchmark. Yeah, yeah. There'd have to be some things along the way because they're earning a credit. Right, and as as you know, Freyla was mentioning, like the, those work products could be a variety of things. I mean, it could yeah. be. I mean, you know, I was even thinking as as you were talking. I mean, the spotlight award for staff has been such a awesome part of like an embedded recognition at at board meetings every month. What if there was a student spotlight yeah, or a group it. of student yeah, spotlight that yes. would be managed? I'm here for that. Managed by the reps. By the reps. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to make a video. <laughs> yeah. We're going to start all this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So like, no. we just quit. Like, no, that, that, <laughs> we're going to have our That's first quit right, right now. <laughs> this is too much. Yes. We're going to stop with the ideas. I mean, the missing boy. The missing voice at the table is is our career pathways coordinator. Right. This is the stuff she does day in day out. Um, so I don't want to get too far down the road and get too far out in front of her. Um, but I mean, I'd be happy to sit with her, you know, sometime, I don't know about tomorrow, but something maybe next week and just kind of pick her brain from her perspective. Cause she's going to know the ins and outs of that more than anybody else. Um, I do think it'd be helpful as a first step to have what Freyla was talking about and just I'll have, it too, I bet it. yeah, that would be great. Um, and if we could take a look at that, we could kind of figure out, you know, how does this sort of stand alone? What does this look like as a standalone experience? Is that, you know, do we have, do we have a couple options here, right? Maybe we say, Hey, this is how you can do this and earn credit, or this is how you can do this and earn this much credit or right? right. more credit. Do the high schoolers have a required community service? We don't. I thought we, I thought we did. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we had to hire this contract. We'll be, we'll be hiring two reps. <laughs> every single next year. Right? Start Grace has been busy. I really thought it's called a bag of goods here. Required to do community service. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
put together a list of our committees, like what the work actually looks like. So for example, Jenna is the communications chair. So she's going to write up, this is the work the communications committee this does. This is the time commitment, like low, medium, high. This is how often we're meeting, you know, and so we're going to do that. Each committee chair is going to put that together. So that I think would be helpful for you too. We just don't have it drafted yet. That's fine. Yeah. But we could get that to you once it's. That's what I mean about how like, mm -hmm. I think we're a little bit up against it just because in terms of, in terms of getting a, a junior rep, um, yeah. that turnaround's pretty quick. So, I mean, we maybe could figure out, I think, you know, Jeff's proposal might be a good interim solution. Like if that's going to be an option for earning credit, hey, you know what, you can just put together a portfolio, um, you know, and that's going to earn you X amount of credit, whatever that may be, um, you know, and, and if you want to do it this way, that might earn you Y amount of credit or whatever yeah. the case may be. The more details we can have about how you want to use the position, um, you know, what those time commitments might be, that would, that would all be really good. And the sooner you could get that, the better. I think to fully develop this, it might be, you know, next year might be an ambitious timeline, but who knows? I'm not saying it's impossible. Yeah, I think we could definitely evolve it. I think, sure. we should, I think we can pilot it. I think we can pilot it with, with Grace. Grace. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. guinea pigs. That's, that's right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want credit? Because that's one. I mean, <laughs> Just teasing them. Yeah, why not? Well, yeah, 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 why not? Because you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else that would be helpful for you to have some part of the information? Um, I can't think of anything right now, but I'm sure when I have that conversation with um, Career Pathways, there might be some more things that come your way, just some questions sure. or details. Um, I, I did approach her just to initially and was like, what do you think of this wild idea? And I know she was excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we had a lot of like, well, what I wonder about, or what is this, or you know, how is that? And um, so, I think anything we can get in terms of detail would be helpful, and we can look at it and, and get back to you with any questions we might have. Should there be a contact for this board so that come through? You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing too with the board meetings, um, we the July and the August, we let that be optional <clears throat> for the student reps. So I get, I don't know if that's a question or that's a option. There's only one meeting in July and August, yeah, right? Yeah, because okay. we, we scale back. Yeah. If you're on the computer, do you want to just glance at the document before I email it out and make sure I didn't miss anything you want to add? Did you hear me about July and August meetings? Yeah. Add that in. <laughs> <No. laughs> I think the other thing that's optional, I mean, this is probably too much detail, but we. Um, like uh, the budget workshops, because those are during school. The retreats we have, we don't require them to come to those. That those could be options. But you, I just don't know what that looks like from the school perspective. The workshops. What was the second thing you said? Um, board retreats. Razzleberries. The senior, the senior rep would be responsible for orchestrating the junior rep. This one right here. The election. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> 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 you mean this one? Yeah. You're way too thorough. Like the <laughs> shovel well, is it's over it's there. April? Oh, so that's too. I will. We started talking about it, but I want notes. Oh, I want to Yes. Okay. Yeah, yours are better. This, this, you, this, this is really great. Yeah. I knew like over the next. I'm super excited about this. She sent it. What should I send this? I wasn't taking it. I thought we were interested in this. So I just, every time I'm going to call it, but it's all right, so I'm going to, if there are no objections, it's um, 653, so um, I think we should adjourn, but before that, Nate, really, this is really awesome. Thank you so much for, for doing this, and thank you, Mike, and thank you, Kathy. This is really great. This is exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. All right, if there's no objections, we will adjourn the meeting. Okay, with no objections, the meeting is adjourned at 6.54. Thank you. I'm sorry, the workshop.